White House is suing to block the release of the book The Room Where It Happened by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. And joining Hot Topics is ABC News anchor who sat down with Bolton for an interview. It's amazing. Martha Raddatz, how are you doing today? And boy, is this a blockbuster. It is a total blockbuster. I'm telling you, page after page is just jaw-dropping uh, what John Bolton says about President Trump throughout the book, throughout our interview. And there's lots more of that interview to come on Sunday. Well, as you know, he is enraged about the book. And for months, he's been trying to keep it from being published. But he's been tweeting over the last 24 hours, calling Bolton a liar and a wacko. I mean, he actually, didn't he hire Bolton? I mean, it's kind of wild to have him say this is all the case with Bolton now when he praised him when he left. What, what's happening here? Well, he certainly did praise him when he left, but the president says he fired Bolton. Bolton says he resigned after 17 months. But the extraordinary thing here is this is the highest ranking person we have heard from who was in that White House, who was side by side with President Trump for 17 months. This is the most comprehensive account from that high ranking an official we have heard. And he, he uses frames, uh, phrases like, President Trump is erratic, stunningly uninformed, ignorant of basic facts. He thought Finland was part of Russia, thought it would be cool to use military action in Venezuela. This is all what John Bolton is talking about. Martha, Bolton is very candid in the book about his assessment of the president, as you just mentioned. And you asked him about that in your interview. I believe we have a clip. You described the president as erratic, foolish, behaved irrationally, bizarrely. You can't leave him alone for a minute. He saw conspiracies behind rocks and was stunningly uninformed. He couldn't tell the difference between his personal interests and the country's interests. I don't think he's fit for office. I, I don't think he has the competence to carry out the job. There really isn't any guiding principle uh, that I was able to discern other than uh, what's good for Donald Trump's reelection. Now, based on details that have been leaking out from the book, Bolton goes on to say that the Ukraine call was, that was at the center of Trump's impeachment charges was just the tip of the iceberg when it came to his abuses of power. He even describes an incident when uh, President Trump asked China's President Xi to help him win re-election in 2020. What have you learned about that? Well, what Bolton says is that uh, Trump asked President Xi to buy U.S. soybeans and wheat so he could get the vote in the farm state, so he could tell the farmers, look, I, I have this great deal. They're buying wheat and soybeans. And he said he heard Trump pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. But listen to that statement again that you just played. He does not think that Donald Trump is fit to be president. That is an extraordinary statement from a top official, a former top official, about a sitting president. Martha, uh, Bolton always seemed like an odd fit for this administration from my perspective. And during his tenure, he had a number of disagreements with the president on foreign policy issues from Afghanistan to Iran. Is Bolton disgruntled by the way things went down? And do you get the sense he's sort of out for revenge here? What does he say is his motivation for putting this out right now? He's certainly getting a big paycheck to do it. You know, really good point, because they were an odd fit from the very beginning. As, as you know well, Megan, uh, John Bolton is kind of a hammer when it comes to foreign policy. And while President Trump uh, talks tough, he did want to get out of Afghanistan uh, and Syria and pull troops out of Iraq. And, and he definitely had clashes with John Bolton. But John Bolton will tell you he is not a disgruntled employee. This book, he says, is, is just about the facts. Mm -hmm. So, Martha, <clears throat> it's Joy. There were plenty of opportunities for Bolton to speak out back in January during the uh, impeachment trial, as we all remember, uh, when Democrats called on him to voluntarily testify, but he declined. Okay? A lot of people, myself included, feel like he shirked his responsibilities as a public servant and an American so that he could make a buck by writing this book. Uh, what does that, what does he say uh, to that criticism? 
Well, he, he has been heavily criticized. You're not the only one for, for not testifying at the impeachment hearings. He says he thought they were too politicized, too narrow in focus, uh, that, that they should have looked at several more issues that came up. But, but his testimony was a key point, or his testimony could have been a key point. One of the things the president's lawyer said is that no one actually heard Trump make the connection between the security assistance and the investigation of Joe Biden. Uh, Bolton says that in the book. He says that in the interview to me, that he actually heard that. Uh, the president, of course, you've heard, is saying that's not true, that's not true. But, but Bolton says he simply didn't think he'd make any difference. Uh, and now I think he's talking and writing this book, says Bolton, uh, because of the upcoming election. Right. Well, better late than never, is what I say. Um, <laughs> uh, he's defended his de decision for not testifying by saying it would have, it would have, wouldn't have changed anything. And in a way, I sort of think that may be true, because even though it was pretty much proven that Trump went to Ukraine to help the, him with his reelection, a lot of the uh, uh, leadership in the Republican Party said that that was not an impeachable offense. So I guess it wouldn't have made any difference if he also went to China. Am I right? I, 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 think, I, I think you've got a, a strong point there, uh, Joy. I, I think he, he does keep saying it wouldn't have made a difference and the politicization of this. And it did seem going into this that a lot of people, into the impeachment hearings, that a lot of people had already made up their minds.